full time. Arsenal won, Tottenham won. The North London derby, always a stressful occasion, I think, for fans of both clubs. But for Arsenal fans today, pretty torturous stuff. We were really poor. Uh, we looked, to be honest, we looked not much uh, better than we did in the Bayern Munich game. We're beaten 5 1. Uh, very leggy. Which, you know, is in part explained by the amount of injuries in the squad. Uh, I think seven senior players uh, out. But going into the game, Santi Zola may have been added to that list since. Um, I think the steward just wants a little cameo. But uh, Tottenham, let's not forget, played on Monday, played on Thursday, and yet looked significantly fresher than us. I know they rotated a little in the Europa League, but a guy like Dele Ali played the majority of both of those games and yet still seems to have a lot more energy than someone like Santi Cazorla. It wouldn't surprise me if it emerged that Cazorla had an injury problem. He was withdrawn at half-time. And to be honest, he looked very uh, lackadaisical in his first half, struggled on the ball, struggled off the ball, much like he did at Bayern. So I think there might be an underlying issue there. Anyway, Spurs took the lead. Very sloppy goal for Arsenal to concede. Merth second Koscielny. I've seen both blamed uh, by different pundits. I think they're both at fault, really. It's about communication. It's about coherence. They didn't have that in the back line. And Kane sprung the offside trap. Czech went the wrong way, which was a slightly odd decision. Czech sort of dived to his near post when it seemed obvious to me that Kane would open his body out. But he redeemed himself, Czech, in the second half with some really good saves. Uh, saves which, given the ultimate full-time scoreline, come into their own light, really. You know, at the time, you sort of don't think much of them because you're still losing the game. But they wouldn't. we wouldn't have got a point were it not for some of the stops he made. The goal when it came, very surprising source. Substitute Kieran Gibbs, um, who replaced Joel Campbell. Arriving at the back post, no surprise about the creator. Mesut Ozil, his 10th assist in the Premier League. I believe he's now set a record for the consecutive games in which he's collected an assist. Um, he didn't have a great 90 minutes, but still produced that telling moment. And that's what big players do, and that's what he's been doing for us of late. Uh, and a massive relief, really. I'm not sure Arsenal necessarily deserved much from this game. I mean, we had a couple of chances, predominantly from set pieces. That is an area where we have improved in recent weeks. And Giroud offered a consistent threat, hit the bar with one very good effort, should have scored with another, um, met the ball about six yards out and somehow turned it wide. I think if he'd hit the target, Norris would have had no chance. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it was one all in the end. I mean, there was a bit of frustration about you know, the referee pulling us back a few times in the last five minutes. I was just mightily relieved that Arsenal got a point from this game. With Manchester City dropping points, Aston Villa, we had the chance to go two points clear at the top. But Spurs were excellent. We were very poor. That never looked on the cards. And given that, keeping pace with City seems like a fair, a fair thing to do. Um, the international break now comes at a very good time, really. Arsenal look like they're badly in need of a break and we need more players back in the squad. The lack of attacking options on the substitutes bench, really speaking for itself. Um, so, what we've got to hope is that there are no new injuries collected in the next few weeks. And we get some of those players, the likes of Chamberlain, the likes of Ramsey, the likes of Walcott, back in the squad. Um, yeah, so, not a good game. Well, good game for the neutral. <laughs> Not a good performance, but an acceptable result given that. All right, I'm going to go. Bye-bye.